made his left hand, but made it too far. Became the special man, and we were Ziggy's band. Hello and welcome to Wars Radio 2. I'm your host, James Wilder, from the Zot Show, and this is the first ever podcast for our series. So as I would say on Ganjin, Wasagoy. That's amazing. Now, a Wars podcast is interesting territory because, frankly, Wars isn't that well known. It's a sci-fi property made by Decipher Inc., whose entire purpose in existing was to be a science fiction setting for them to create a card game in after they lost the rights to make the Star Wars card game shortly before Star Wars Episode II came out. The rules to their old game were beloved, so Decipher figured they could create a new game, and the old players would flock to it even if it didn't have the Star Wars brand plastered on the front. Turns out they wanted the Star Wars logo plastered on the front. (laughs) Okay, well it's more complicated than that, but now's not the time. Anyway, Decipher only released two sets in the Wars trading card game before they put the game on indefinite hiatus, which is fancy speak for cancelled. And if all there was was a card game, I'm pretty sure outside of a few dead card game nights at your favorite local game store, Wars would be completely forgotten. Luckily, for those of us who loved it, Decipher gave us quite a bit more. You see, Decipher had a brilliant marketing strategy for the game that I wish deeply more games would copy. Since they didn't have a sci-fi world ready, they hired well-known writers like New York Times best-selling author Michael A. Stackpole, author of I, Jedi, X-Wing, Rogue Squadron, etc., and artists like John Howe, who helped design the Lord of the Rings movies, and Kieran Yanner, who you may recognize for a lot of great game art for video and tabletop games, and got them together to build a world. The world they made was rich with stories and conflict, a place where an Earth ruled by dictator corporations fights a communist Mars ruled by a computer, where humans on the fringes of space replace their limbs with robotic parts, where vicious insectoid quay rip through soldiers, and near godlike she seek to wipe humanity from the map. They built the world of wars. And then they showed it off. You see, The brilliant marketing strategy was that they gave the world away on their website. People who visited could download a soundtrack for the game and read short stories about characters in the world. There was a podcast, the original Wars Radio, with developer interviews. It was a veritable cornucopia of information and fun times. Sadly, that all came to a crashing end when the game died. But the end wasn't what it seemed. After all, the files still existed, and as long as there were fans to pass them around, there would still be wars. So, in the end, the material, which was meant to slowly build up a world, became the only material the fanbase had. Fans of wars clung to those files and searched around for rumored stories they had never read. I was one of them. But with no new news on the horizon, and no future for the property, people gradually forgot about wars, and it became a 23 short story footnote in the history of the Star Wars trading card game. That is, till two things happened in quick succession. The big one was that Josh Radke at GrailQuest Books, Long May He Live, picked up the license to wars and began to publish novellas based on it. This was astounding, utterly flabbergasting news. To be a fan of a property and to think it is utterly and surely dead and find out somebody is going to be making more stories for it, well, it's a great feeling, and I was sure happy to have that. It was like being a Firefly fan all over again. Secondly, for me personally, I decided I was sick of paying a ton of money to play Magic and bought a store display of old Wars decks and thought I'd teach my friends to play. When I found that they liked it and started they started teaching their friends, I told them how there were short stories, and all of a sudden, I had to wrangle them up. In a very short time, I was at the center of a tiny explosion of wars, which led me to finding out that there were going to be novellas, which led me to starting the Zacha Wars fan site, which led to this podcast, Wasagoy indeed. So if you're wondering what's exciting about wars, it's that we're at the forefront of something that's good and loved and being expanded with something new and great. If, if you haven't read the New Wars novellas by Nathan P. Butler, Jim Perry, Shawnee Williams, Sabrina Freed, well, they are good reads. 
and I don't say that lightly. I was fully prepared to accept mediocrity or utter dung from these new novellas and just sit back and be happy someone was making New Wars material, but these guys have gone above and beyond. Plus, they're pretty nice people if you get the chance to talk to them, and having met Jim Perry in person, I can say he's pretty much as down-to-earth but dashing as some sort of awesome, dapper, dashing, down-to-earth stereotype or something. Never mind, I'm done, and if I had shame, I would edit that out. <laughs> and check out Wars at Facebook.com slash WarsUniverse or at thezacho.weebly.com. If you want to contact us, leave us a comment on our blog at the Zacho, and your words could make it on this show. Uh, in the next few weeks, we'll have more exciting things to talk about with Wars, about the future and past of Wars. We'll be talking about the different novellas that have already been released, and we'll be talking about what made Wars fail in the past, and what can be done to make it great in the future. So, until next time, Zacho conquers. Ciao.